Akio's 360 degree mirror dash cam is an interesting piece of tech. It's a dash cam, rear view mirror, backup camera, side view blind spot camera, all in one package. In this video, I'm going to cover in more detail what you can do with this dash cam when you parallel park and reverse park using its rear camera and reverse assistance feature. We'll also take a look at what to expect when using the side view camera to cover your blind spot, lane change, and lastly, what to expect when using it to replace your factory rear view mirror. If you want a detailed review of this 3-channel dash cam's main features, find and watch our full review video for it on our channel. Fracking Creations, showing you the good stuff. A quick disclosure before I get started. This is not a paid or sponsored review. However, I initiated contact with Akio and they agreed to send me this unit for free to review, and I do get to keep it after. I provide my honest review of this dash cam after actually installing and using it in detail. Links to purchase this dash cam are in the video description. Note that if you watch this video linked on another website and not on our YouTube channel, but want to support our work, navigate to our actual YouTube video to use our links in the video description to purchase. The Akio AKY V360 ST Mirror Dash Cam. Here we go. One of the features that drew me towards this dash cam is the large LCD touchscreen that could be used as a rear view, side view, and backup camera. Newer cars nowadays come with backup cameras and some even have 360 degree surround view or bird's eye view cameras. This is a great feature to have to help make things safer and to prevent accidents due to blind spot. With this Accio dash cam, not only do you get a dash cam, you get an additional rear and side camera with live view added to your vehicle. Backup camera feature. Let's see how useful Accio's rear view camera is. I had a chance to use the rear view camera in a car and a SUV and also with and without the reverse assistance feature of the dash cam. I also tried the system with the rear camera inside and outside the vehicle to see the differences. Here's what I found. The first setup I tested is with the camera installed inside on the rear windshield. When reversing or parallel parking, the rear view can help a lot in giving you more coverage than you would get just looking out the rear window or when using the factory rear view mirror. This is because the camera is installed angled downwards right at the top of the rear windshield and has a wide angle view. You can actually see a wider view vertically and horizontally, which allows you to see more of your blind spots too. When using this in the car, the trunk will still block part of the view directly behind the vehicle, so you can't fully see everything behind, but you will see more than with any rear view mirror. In a SUV, however, there is no trunk jutting out. Plus, the camera is installed higher up so you get even more vertical coverage and can better see directly behind the vehicle. The ultimate setup for best field of view coverage is having the rear camera installed outside the vehicle. If you angle it low enough, you will have a really good view of what's directly behind your vehicle and can see how close you are to the curb or vehicle behind. The cool thing is you can scroll down or up to adjust the view as needed. Note that there are two options for rear cameras and one of them is rated IP67 waterproof. I recommend choosing the waterproof camera so that you have the option to install in the location that works best for you, inside or outside the vehicle. Two potential downsides to exterior installation is that you may get additional glare from vehicle headlights at night due to the lower height of where the camera is installed. Plus, the camera can get dirty when driving in wet conditions. With the addition of the optional side camera, the blind spot opposite the driver can now be made visible. When parking the vehicle, you are able to see the lines of the parking stall, the vehicle beside you, or the curb. When using this feature, double tap on the side view to go in and out of full side view, then scroll up or down as necessary. Very useful to have indeed. The result of having both the rear and side view cameras as additional aids is that you can more easily fit in tight spots and get very close to the curb, all without damaging your vehicle or causing an accident. Reverse Assistance Feature The reverse assistance feature of the dash cam is the capability to detect when you put your vehicle in reverse and then to bring up the rear camera view with assistance lines to help you reverse your vehicle. To activate this feature, you have to connect the dash cam to a reverse light bulb of your vehicle. When you put your vehicle into reverse, the white reverse lights are activated. This is the signal that the dash cam needs to activate the assistance feature. The rear camera cable has an additional red wire coming out from it you will have to splice that wire into the red or positive wire of one of the reverse bulbs. With this feature installed, whenever you put your vehicle into reverse, the rear camera live view is brought up and the guidelines are displayed. Note too that the view is automatically positioned lower down so you can see the road directly behind. I found this to be quite useful. You can additionally scroll up and down manually as necessary to ensure you can see the vehicle behind or the road below. 
Note that the assistance feature does not bend the assistance lines as you turn the steering wheel like some newer car systems do, since the dash cam can't detect your steering angle. Side view camera feature. If you choose to get the optional side view camera, you get an additional camera that is recorded by the dash cam, which is also usable as a live view on the screen. The side view camera is not only useful for parking scenarios, but also for lane changing or when turning the vehicle. When lane changing or turning, you can see if there's anything in the next lane or in the blind spot, whether it is large, small, tall, or short. You can even have all three cameras displayed at the same time or the split side view and rear view as the default view. This will allow you to glance at what's behind and beside you as needed. Because the camera is outside the vehicle, you will be able to see other areas you cannot see just by shoulder checking. Though shoulder checking is still required since objects in the live view are closer than they appear. This dash cam also has another feature that can automatically bring up the full screen side view when you activate the turn signal to the passenger side. Shortly after you deactivate the turn signal, the screen will return to the previous view. Pretty cool for having this all automatically happen. This feature is enabled by connecting the appropriate turn signal bulb wire to the dash cam. In my case, this is the right turn signal. The side camera cable has an additional red wire that will need to be spliced to the positive bulb wire for this purpose. Though this feature can be useful for some, we didn't find the automatic switching to be that necessary for us, so we disconnected it. Rear view mirror versus rear live view. Another useful thing about the Accio V360 ST is that it can function both as a larger replacement rear view mirror and also as a rear view camera. To use it as a rear view mirror, you set the dash cam settings to have a screen saver of one or two minutes. This will automatically turn the screen off after one or two minutes allowing you to see the mirror image clearly while the dash cam is still running and recording. You position the mirror as you would your factory mirror and use it the same. I found the mirror to be very good. I actually like it better than the factory mirrors of both the vehicles I tested it in. There's just something about having such a large mirror with a good reflecting surface. Note that when a hard enough impact is detected by the dash cam, it will beep to indicate that it is locking the current recording and at the same time also turns on the screen. This is where the screensaver setting comes in and turns the screen off after the set timeout. Alternatively, you could just press the power button quickly and it will turn the screen off. To make this feature better, I do have a suggestion. If the screensaver is enabled, I do think it would be more useful that when the emergency recording is done saving the current file, the screen should also turn off at the same time. Otherwise, one or two minutes is a long time to wait before you can properly see the rear view mirror again without the video superimposed on the reflection. The large screen of this mirror dash cam is very useful, but one of the most annoying things about all mirror dash cams that are wide is the fact that they can get in the way of the sun visors. If it suddenly gets sunny and the driver or front passenger has to use the sun visor, the dash cam can accidentally get knocked out of place. Let's look at the live rear view feature next. When using the dash cam as a live rear view camera, you don't have some of the disadvantages of rear view mirrors. For example, the rear headrests or any passenger sitting in the rear seats that will block your view. If you want to use the dash cam as a live rear view camera, then make sure you position the mirror face perpendicular to the level ground as the instructions indicate. This is to prevent the reflection of the rear windshield from superimposing on the video feed in the screen. My wife actually prefers to use the mirror instead of the live views. This is because even though the rear camera view allows you to see what the factory mirror cannot, like the vehicles beside you and in your blind spot, this results in other issues. The rear view video feed is wide angle and so objects are closer than they appear. This is very similar to the passenger side view mirrors where objects are closer than they appear. This results in the driver sometimes not being able to realize that the vehicle behind is very close or is approaching quickly until they are literally right behind you. If you look at what the factory mirror shows versus the rear camera feed, you can see the difference. I would like to see a setting where you can set the zoom level of the rear video feed in the mirror to one time, two times, or four times, so that you can customize it to more closely match the factory mirror view depending on your preference. In my simulation of having a zoom feature, you can see that the rear live view of the dash cam still has more coverage than the factory mirror. This setting should not affect the recorded video and the display should default back to one time view when reverse assistance mode is activated. If they do that, I think this would make this dash cam even better. Though this dash cam is a useful aid for use in your vehicle, I should still mention that as with any camera system used in vehicles, when you use it to drive, you will still have to be very careful and physically look around to ensure you cover any remaining blind spots the cameras miss or distort due to the wide angle lens. 
Also, there is a very slight delay in the video feed compared to live, which is similar to other in-vehicle systems. So there you have it, a review of the cool backup, reverse assist, side view, and rear view features you get in this three-channel mirror dash cam with a large touchscreen. Akio has done a nice job with what you get packaged into this dash cam. We really do enjoy using it and we'll keep it installed on one of our vehicles. Find links to purchase this dash cam in our video description below. Like, subscribe, and share our videos to help our channel grow. We appreciate your support.